What's up, everybody? Ardo Cal here with ESPN Esports. Be sure to watch the Rift Rewind, an ESPN League of Legends show, every single Monday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, on Twitch, the ESPN app, YouTube, and Twitter. When you look at FlyQuest right now, Darren, what are some of the positives that you're really seeing? I love Ignar. Ign I'm a support player myself. I uh, consider myself a challenger level Leona player. Chat, you guys can blame me for that one. But I love watching Ignar. When he's, he, when he's allowed to be flashy and fun on uh, playmaking supports, it just creates this really fun dynamic for FlyQuest to play around. Uh, there was a nine minute, 30 minute, or nine minute, 30 second jungle fight against Golden Guardians where he flashes, it pops his ult, flashes over a wall, and then runs through his Rakan with his ult and charms four people and then zips back and forth to get back to safety. It was really uh, fun to watch. And I just think with his wins across Leona, Rakan, Thresh, Blitzcrank, and Alistar, those, those are the support champions I want to see him continue to play because they allow him to basically set up his team, his team that wants to be aggressive and wants to fight like Viper and Wild Turtle, to just, you know, explode and, yeah. and do what they want to do best. Emily, is FlyQuest success sustainable in your opinion? So this was my prediction, like when they asked us for second, like second half of the split hot takes, it was actually, I was the one that said uh, FlyQuest will finish third or higher. Um, I guess that's not as much of a hot take, but when I look at FlyQuest, I see a team that still makes, you know, a ton of mistakes, uh, especially given some of the uh, veteran talent they have on their team. Uh, when I'm talking about Santorin, a Wild Turtle, um, and Poe and Ignar as well, especially given their existing, uh, their pre-existing synergy together a bit. Um, however, I do also see a team that is really aggressive when they want to be. Like I said, like that that CLG game, you know, they go for the dive top, um, which I liked, but they they botch it. And then, you know, they they get uh, caught out bot and then PoE is already rotating down on the Corky. Um, you just see a team that kind of wants to be one of those teams where, you know, Viper is TPing in, um, you know, uh, PoE is TPing in when he can or he's just pushing out the wave and rotating. And I think that is a really cool look for this team, especially with Santorin, who again is a jungler that I value, like I personally value pretty highly. I think he has a really strong understanding of the game and I like a lot of his early pathing. So um, I really like the way that this team wants to play. Like if you look at their games, you can really tell how they want to play. Like they would like to be more aggressive. They do want to be initiating those fights. And when they are initiating those fights, they want the entire team to be able to join in, either from having already pushed up their wave and then pre-rotating or from TPing in. So I think if they can nail down like more of the, the fundamentals and the communication, because it's like the, the idea is there, uh, but the execution and the timing is sometimes off for them. And I think uh, given the way that, given who is on this team and the way that they already kind of seem to be on the same page about how they want to play, that's why I predicted that they would finish third or higher. So where do you guys think they'll finish by the end of the split? I mean, I think they'll be in that top three position for sure, especially the way that they've been playing. But Emily, I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about their play style and their decision making. Uh, in the Golden Guardians match, there was a 5v fight that mid, uh, broke out in the mid lane around 27 minutes. So a, a, a late game team fire, at least opening to the late game. Viper was at 25 or 75% health. Power of Evil only had 30% of his mana, and they still jump in and fight, and they win the fight. Even though Haunter TP's in, I believe he TP'd in, but he came in full health as a uh, fully built Aatrox. And they still come out and win that fight. Now, that kind of team identity to me is really entertaining to watch, but is that the sort of stuff that those moves, are those moves that they can make against teams like Cloud9 to try to take down some of those top tier teams? I mean, probably not. I think it's more like more than looking at late game team fights uh, for FlyQuest. If they're going to take down someone like C9, they have to attack them early because uh, you know C9 go for. They're really smart about their. They've been really smart about their level ones. Um, they've been really good about being super aggressive early, and I think that's what FlyQuest want to do. But they definitely you know haven't done it yet. 
Um, I know talking to Wild Turtle, not this past week, but the week before, uh, he was talking about how they just really, really wanted to be that aggressive early team, and they hadn't yet. Like, they kind of found themselves on the back foot a lot early due to mistakes they would make, again, like going for going for dives and kind of um, mis-executing them or um, just being in, like, push, like having lanes pushed out uh, against them so they couldn't go for those aggressive moves that they would typically want to do. Um, I think if they're going to attack a team like C9, they absolutely have to do it early instead of uh, instead of waiting for, for later game team fights to kind of try to come out on top.